Every day that there's another incident in our city where a child is abused or neglected or suffers from some violent uh, witnessing it or directly being involved, the importance of ACEs, adverse childhood experiences, and their impact on the developing child is something that we just can't stop working on. We can't stop working on. PCAT was the foundation for helping communities and providers learn about trauma in children and learning how to deal with that trauma and ask the question, what happened to you versus what's wrong with you? No child wakes up wanting to do something that's going to harm someone or hurt someone. And most of the things that cause children to have any kind of behavioral problem result from some kind of negative experience that they've had. It's been quite beneficial. Without the PCAT process, we wouldn't know the kinds of traumas that these children are going through. It also gives us an opportunity to get, get further involved with the family and then to provide treatment, or at least to recommend treatment. Uh, many times these children go undiagnosed, untreated, and as a result of that, the cycle just continues to go on and on. So they continue to miss school, they continue to be violent, they continue to have um, non-pro-social non skills. So by doing this, we're able to help those children understand what kinds of things are going on, that's causing them to miss schools, and how we can help to resolve that. I have been a partner with the PCAT grant since the beginning. Um, so we've worked now with Dr. Stewart and the team for three years. Um, we have served in multiple capacities. Our biggest um, work with the committee has been in screening youth for trauma. And so we did a lot of work in the first year preparing for the screenings and we concentrated with Project Prevent. Um, and in the second year, we really moved to focusing on youth who were involved in truancy specifically with the Student Attendance Review Boards. And so as part of my role, I spent a lot of time with the um, Shelby County Schools truancy staff and we did um, screenings. We, we did trainings with them to uh, really help them identify youth who would potentially benefit from the screenings. And so we then had staff present at the SARB meetings two days a week and we screened youth that they brought to us. And so the truancy staff did a really good job of identifying youth and families where it seemed like there was something else going on. Cat is that we've really been striving to make sure that we have moved the Memphis and Shelby County community forward in regards to ACEs and really addressing the needs of the children of our community. One of the big ways that we have done this is that we have been working with our partners in the school system and in the court and with our um, community agencies. We've really been working towards um, making sure that we are doing screenings to adjust, to address adverse childhood experiences, early childhood trauma in the Memphis and Shelby County area. One of the ways that we've done this with the grant is that we have really been working to look at screening. Um, and that has been primarily what my role has been with working with as a partner with the PCAT grant. Um, I have worked with the school system um, as well as juvenile court in order to be able to provide training around completing trauma screenings in order to be able to identify children who might be in need of mental health services in relation to traumatic experiences. Well, I feel like the PCAT is a wonderful vehicle for getting to the root of the problem and it's the first step in solving the problem. But as far as the PCAT, we see that for any youth that's not going to court. So this is our pre-adjudicated youth. They come in, they're screened, um, we're able to assess what their trauma levels are, and then we're able to appropri appropriately refer them to a trauma-informed organization within the community. Um, we've got this knowledge. We understand there's a strong science, so it's not just anecdotal, believe me because I say it's true. We can actually demonstrate changes in the brain. We can show how behaviors improve or don't improve depending on what intervention you use. So we know a lot about evidence-based practices in, in working in the uh, area of providing trauma treatment. 
But now we've got to assure that the people who do this are competent in many ways. They've got to be competent with the skill they have to provide the service. They've got to be competent in the way they approach the people and offer that service to the people who need that service. And we've got to be competent in how we, we restructure and revise our systems of care so that we don't have policies that contradict the kind of care we want to give. It's got to be competent across the board as it relates to trauma. In addition to the training, working with the staff to get them to document the screening and feeding that data back to them as we were able to look at it and summarize it and deliver it back to them, it reassures them that the work that they're doing is important, that they see the outcomes, that they see the level of need in the students and children they serve. Um, so doing the work becomes more routine as a part of what they do in a normal course of activities um, and tracking it they see as an important thing because they can demonstrate the work that they're doing. Well at the end of the day you know PCAT is a program that is funded by the state and for the next few years we'll have resources to do a variety of things. We'll continue to educate and inform, we'll continue to do trauma screenings, we'll continue to propose policy and practice recommendations to change the system from what it is now to becoming more trauma competent. Um, and what I'd like to see at the end of this program is a community that has accepted the challenge of doing something every day, every body, to make us better at understanding the impact of trauma and doing something about that on behalf of our children and their families. Um, it's going to take all of us, our, you know, our elected officials, our education people, our business community, uh, our child advocates, uh, the mental health professionals in town. It's going to take everybody getting on board with understanding this is the important work of our future.